Hey YouTube, Beef Magnet here. Welcome to episode 46, my Feed the Beast Continuum, quick tips, tricks, and shits. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about this Fusion control computer and then the components to get it. Uh, the reason that we really want to go over this is due to this uh, tier 6 void ore miner, um, you're going to need helioplasm cells. Um, and the only way to get those really is in this fusion control computer um, and knocking these down. So you can get helium-3 cells. This, it's, you know, it's not a deal breaker to do it in the fusion control computer. It's just easy because you'd probably be generating this anyway uh, with tritium and deuterium cells um, and just producing energy out of it. You can do this stuff in the industrial centrifuge. Um, helium cells and stone dust if you've if you ventured that route uh, but helium cells really aren't all that difficult to make uh, it's glowstone so you can put these together this way um, I just it's it's pretty damn simple in order to just go do these to the fusion fusion control computer um, just because um, you're gonna end up using this anyway at some point um, it's just it, it's fun so this system um, let's talk about the fusion control computer first so let's take a look at this bad boy these components are expensive this is probably one of the most expensive machines that I've encountered yet it takes forever to get the shit together for this um, but if you've got a tier 5 void or miner going this really isn't all that difficult to complete uh, let's take a look at these energy flow circuits. This stuff is expensive. You're going to need tungsten, um, and you're going to need a significant amount of it. So if you're seeing this stuff, go pick it up, uh, break your math down, and figure out what you need in order to get this tungsten because you have to have it. Uh, the iridium alloy plates here are also incredibly expensive. Um, I've got a recipe to actually craft this iridium alloy stuff. Uh, this is all completed. Uh, and it's done through ME Craft, but you're going to need 16 TNT in the implosion compressor to even get the plate. So if you haven't been um, spawning creepers and generating uh, uh, gunpowder, sorry, uh, you're going to have to start doing that. And you're going to have to make a shitload of it because it just requires a ton in order to get these, um, oops, the iridium alloy plates. The rest of this stuff, these Lapitron crystals really aren't all that expensive, but the advanced electronic circuits, you're going to need a whole pile of those too. So, um, the fusion coils here, and this requires 16. So your basic machine is going to require 17 fusion cells, or fusion coils, excuse me. Um, and these really aren't cheap. Um, you're looking at advanced machine casings, so tons of chrome, a whole shitload of emerald dust just because you're going to need emerald plates, um, and then reinforced machine casings. So you're looking at a whole ton of advanced electronic circuits too. Steel plates. I've not used as much steel this playthrough as I have in the past. Um, I kind of just keep a few stacks on hand and then just every time I log in, just make some more steel, go pick it up, do whatever. So... Um, not a ton of steel used here. Just remember these fusion coils are expensive as shit. So again, you're using four more energy flow control circuits. Um, these damn iridium alloy plates. So keep that in mind. Nichrome heating coils, these aren't too bad. Uh, but you are looking at chrome ingots. So if you're not doing that, um, should be dumping that out from ruby dust. But you should be getting that and pumping that through uh, the ME network with that, that tier 5. I've actually got a, a red lens on there, but as you can see, 15k ruby dust, another 13k rubies. Uh, this this isn't a problem. Just dump it into the electrolyzer and you should have no problem picking up the chrome. Tungsten is going to be the pain in the ass for you, so just keep that in mind. Let's go take a look at how this machine works now that you've looked at some of the components. I think we should talk about the uh, coils quick let's take a look here again fusion these iridium neutron reflectors um, so remember you're going to need iridium here and then these reflectors this is where that beryllium shit comes into play 
I think we talked about automating um, a little bit of the beryllium stuff. You're going to have to make one cell. Let's take a look here. Oops, get that shit out of here. So as you can see here, I've already got this set up. This is the fluid replicator. If you haven't used this before, build this machine. Um, you're going to need some reinforced machine casings. But as you can see here, uh, this is actually beryllium in here. So you'll have to make one dump the cell into the center of this thing. Um, so just so it stays in here. And then 10 UU matter will get you this fluid produced. So not too difficult. Um, just remember that fluid replicator is there. It's just really easy to make stuff through that thing. Um, and there's actually a recipe for it specifically for that beryllium. So, so that is the fusion coil. That's really the main components. Um, the superconductor is pretty easy to make. These helium coils are probably the most expensive part. But again, here you've got iridium alloy and more tungsten. Um, and these are just helium cells. So you can make a certain amount of those um, through this guy, industrial center fusion. So depending on how you want to do this, um, in order to get those, those helioplasm cells, it's, it's totally up to you, but this is just relatively simple. So let's take a look at this guy. Um, you can see the, the setup here, this is how I've got this set up, but you really don't have to do this because you do have, um, an interface here. Um, you can configure the slots, so left and right. I don't have this set up per se, uh, just because I've been running it uh, very little, because I really haven't had the need for it yet. Um, but you do, you can configure this. If you turn the hologram stuff on, like I just switched that on, you can increase the size of this. Just to see here. And this is incomplete back on there we go so you can see as we change this machine up and the further we push this out you can see kind of in the background this is the components required you see a multiplier down here so the base number for say deuterium or yeah deuterium and tritium this is the multiplier that's going to come out of that but this is the required coils it shows you this is an incomplete block this thing will go all the way out to 50 and that is a shitload of these coils. Um, maybe something to do. Maybe I'll try it later. But right now, I'm just going to stick with the base and let this thing just do its thing. Um, as you can see here, uh, it's got 400 million RF sitting there. Um, and you can see the rate at which this stuff goals I mean 32k you can see I've got uh, some plugs and point set up here so on the top is the plug so this is the way this works is it it's the power is withdrawn out the top and it's input through one of the horizontal sides you can use the bottom to, to withdraw as well but this machine does require a certain amount of energy to get started so let's take a look at this really quick and let's just, for the sake of it, go back in this way, helioplasm, and we're looking at a helium-3 cell. That's not really what I wanted. That is. So when we're doing tritium and deuterium, it's 240 million RF or FE to even start this. So once it starts, it's generating uh, 65K RF or FE per tick, and it runs for 120 seconds. Now that should be enough to get this thing started, but I've noticed that it takes a few of these um, cells in order to actually get enough power back to be positive. Like you put 240 million RF in, you're gonna have to do a few cycle of this to even get your RF back out. If you wanna do these by hand, I mean, it's not a big deal depending on what your um, the extreme reactors uh, setup looks like. It, this might not be an issue for here. I think um, the reason I have this set up on a switch, and you can see here that it's it's currently deactivated. This is actually pulling from a plug up in my uh, my upstairs power room. So in order to get this thing initially charged, I use a point 
and then set this to be active with a redstone signal and I put it on the horizontal side. Uh, set the transfer limit, whatever, leave it as default, but if I, if for some reason, and I'm leaving this as is, if I need to get this thing full, I put this on a switch because otherwise it's a constant drain. Uh, it's kind of a pain in the ass, so you'll have to manage this a little bit, but this works relatively well. Uh, this flux plug here is set to activated, so that one's always on. And let's go run upstairs quick just to show the rest of this. And I know this episode's going to get a little bit long-winded. It might be a little bit confusing, but once you get it set up, it shouldn't be a big deal. So there's the flux controller, but here is here's the point for that. And this is currently set to activated with that switch. So that stuff is all generated down there. It'll push it back into the system. Um, just kind of be aware that if you've got these set up, it's going to loop. And if you've got the the screen set up like I do downstairs, it does all kinds of weird shit. Because it constantly draws out of the network and puts it back. So this is something you're going to have to manage a little bit. And really it's not all that difficult. But you could see. So here's my fusion input. Here's my fusion output. Here's the main input and the main output. Um, but none of this other stuff. This is like this is the regular plug. Um, like for all the charging stuff, this is always active. But this point to pull it back out and push it into the network is going to come from here. So right now it's active. Let's go take a look. We'll do a reaction here. Play around with that flux network stuff. You're going to figure out what works best for you. I've figured out that the switch out here on this particular machine is just easier to work with. So we can run this a couple times here. So I've got some tritium and deuterium cells here. Let's just do a set of five of these. I think that should be enough to actually show what's going on here. Um, but this is just, it's kind of a sink. So let's throw these in here. And there it goes. So you can see that it took the 240 million RF out of there to do the initial reaction. These go into the system. Um, and then it just runs. So you can see that these first two cells, I mean, you're generating millions of RF, you know, with just these. Um, so once that's done, this should come up with uh, helium-3. Um, and then in order to get your helioplasm, so this next helioplasm is 160 million RF per tick, but the generation rate is, is twice that and then some, but it only runs for 51 seconds. So helium-3 cell with a deuterium cell will get you your helioplasm cells, and you need four of those. Now, there was one other machine uh, included in this, and I'm just going to let this run. We can come back to it. Um, but if you noticed... There is another machine in the tier in better questing, and I'll show it to you in a second here. Eat something. So this is the plasma generator. This thing will take in those helioplasm cells. Um, and let's take a look at better questing really quick here. Let's go to, what is that under, industrial, rebirth? Yep, here it is. So once we've got the fusion computer and the fusion coils done, uh, this opens up in here. And you end up with this plasma generator. So it all allows you to use helioplasm to generate very large amounts of RF in addition to the RF that was created making it. So the reward here for these two helioplasm cells, let's pull that out. The plasma generator itself, um, this isn't a really expensive machine. I figured this was going to be worse. Um, so you're just looking at a generator, some energy flow circuits, but this, this tongue steel, this really isn't all that complicated to make either. This HV transformer is super simple as well. But the output on this machine, so we'll just dump a helioplasm cell in there. It just drains this. And then it'll just pump this shit back out. Um, I haven't used this a ton. Uh, 
but it's there. And so just make sure that if you're going to go ahead and use this, um, you're going to generate that stuff anyway. You can, this is a, a place to use those helioplasm cells. You could actually, I'm not sure, this is probably, you can automate this just because you can configure the slots on how this works, but I'm not sure how much you're going to use this, if at all. Um, but it does work. This is another source there. You can see that you're generating some RF, so 33 million. It will go up over time. This isn't the fastest machine, um, but you know this is a place to use those helioplasm cells. I think I have enough of those downstairs that I don't have to worry about this, but anyway, it's being generated down here. Anyway, let's go take a look real quick at what this fusion control computer is doing. And there you go, helium-3 cells. So these would get reacted back out or pushed through this computer with more deuterium cells, and then you've got helioplasm cells. So you see here, this is all loaded up. Uh, my network is freaking full just because I've only got 205 million storage available. I got to work on increasing that just because maybe I'll need it, maybe I won't. But um, that's about it for this episode. Just wanted to go, and go over the building blocks of that fusion computer. Use the hologram. Um, but you're going to need it to get that tier six for you or minor. So until next time.